Listen, I don't know what the devil is trying to throw your way. But I want to say this. Everything is going to be okay. Listen, come here. Give me a hug real quick. Listen, if nobody has told you recently, I'm proud of you. God hasn't forsaken you. You know, we can let thoughts like I've sinned too much put up a barrier that we don't go to God. And then the devil tries to whisper in our ears that we just have to accept that we are too far gone. But listen to me when I say this. You are not too far gone. Listen, it's in our weakness that he is made strong. Listen, I used to fall into this trap all the time. Thinking that because I sinned too much, because I messed up, that God changed his mind about me. Or maybe that I had to hold back. But let's pray really quick. Yeah, let, let's pray really quick. Father in heaven, Lord, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you reach into this person's life right here, my friend, and wrap your arms around them to show them just how much you love and care for them. Lord, I know that you are bigger than any problem that we may be facing. And Lord, I ask that you blow a new wind of hope into my friend's life right now in Jesus' name. Help us to stay the course of walking with you. And listen, I declare freedom over my friend's mind right here, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, God is saying to someone right here, right now, a new wind of rest is coming. And, and you know, I felt the spirit of the Lord saying that he is going to lead you to that place of supernatural rest. It's that supernatural rest that you are looking for. And listen, I know you're tired. And I know it's rough out here. And look, I get it. Some days it feels like all hell has broke loose against you. But do not allow that to snatch up your peace. Just recenter back on the most high God. Because in this season right here, in this season, God is trying to show you that you need him and nothing else. Listen, he's trying to bring you back to that place of stillness in every circumstance. Paul shows us this in Philippians 4, 12 and 13. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Listen, it is through that wind of hope that God breathes his strength into our bones to keep going, to keep pushing, to keep showing up another day. So from here, from right here, just take it one day at a time. Just one day at a time. And don't beat yourself up anymore for what happened. I know the temptation is overwhelming at times and I know that weight is heavy. But you got to ask yourself this. If this burden is so heavy, what am I carrying that I'm not supposed to be? Because remember, remember, Jesus said this in Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 and 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. And right here in verse 30, he says, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, God took all of that on the cross. Yes, even that. Yep, that too. And even that. So all sin is the same to him. He doesn't see your sin any greater than anyone else. So you've got to keep your head up right here and you've got to keep it moving. But now, you know what's cool is that you realize that you can't do this thing without him. I had to get to that point. And I had to realize that it's not a church building. It's not a thousand praise songs. It's not a preacher on this universe. It is the God of the universe. You know that same God that used people just like you and me? He used them to write the Bible that we have today. 
So I don't know who this message is for and I don't know why God is putting this on my heart, but you only need to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. Then literally everything follows suit after that. So please don't give up right here. Please, you've got so much more in you. I say this with all love and seriousness. You don't have to doubt or question that God is with you because you've got breath in your lungs and he woke you up another day. So let this video be confirmation for you today that he saw and heard your prayer, that you just prayed. That's why I'm on your screen right now because he wants you to know the answer is yes and amen. 1 Corinthians 1.20 says it like this, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Sometimes we don't understand that when we pray, he hears everything. It just takes some time because he's not a genie that magically makes everything happen right as we want them to. There is some stuff that is in our hearts that he has to get out. But the reason he does this is so that way he gets the glory for what he's about to do in your life. You know, I, I'm serious. Your life is about to change in the greatest way possible. You, you are literally leaving a legacy behind of the one who stayed. And look, God is going to get the glory for what's happening for generations to come in your life. The work he's doing in your life, no one would be able to deny. No one would be able to deny that you had faith in God and he did a massive work in you. Psalm 1611 says it like this. You have made known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Listen, it's going to be that perseverance through all of this that brings your breakthrough. It's going to be that faith that brings the rest that your soul needs. That's why you got to keep it pushing no matter how it looks right now. No matter how you feel. Listen, I'm telling you right now, please hear me. Please hear me. God is about to do something so incredible in your life. But here's the clincher. You've got to keep pushing to be able to see it. You know, think about that lady with the issue of blood. It says that she was sick for 12 years. There was no doctor that could help her. Actually, it says that they only made things worse. Imagine the hopelessness she felt in that moment. She, she probably just accepted the fact that, that this was just how it is. You know, what's so bad about this is that she was even supposed to announce that she even had an issue. So when she came into a room, into anywhere, she had to announce her issue. But you know, I'm sure it was just easier to hide it. Because she wouldn't even be able to go into the, the synagogue to worship. Because then everybody would be ritually unclean. And at this point, her issue started to probably define her and honestly create a barrier for her. But one day, come on, this is the God that we serve. One day she had a crazy idea. What if I just touch Jesus's garment, just the hem? So just imagine as she crawled through the crowd, risking getting crushed, risking making everyone unclean. But that didn't stop her. This means that no matter how it looked, she just needed to get into the vicinity of Jesus. But her posture was at his feet. But this is what it says in Luke 8, 48. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Look, she didn't give up because it looked impossible. She didn't let her issue keep her from going to Jesus. She didn't allow her circumstance to stop her from receiving the miracle. So don't allow your circumstance to determine if you receive or not. You are about to encounter the God of the universe and he is saying to you right now, right here, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. Watch what God does next. Your miracle is right around the corner. Right here at the end of this video, type this. Say, I'm reaching for the hymn of who saves. Look, I love you so much. I'll see you on the next one.